Hello. Greetings. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, we'll get started at five after. Meeting notes are in Zoom chat, calendar invite, other places. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Ian. I um, trust you haven't been up to anything too uh, uh, untoward while I've been on holiday. No, all good. Um, let's see. Update on the best practice categories, I think was the, the main thing. I may repeat that today, just to let more people see. I'm gonna add it to the agenda. It's a little apps, but I don't want any apps. All right. Um, hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. Um, welcome hi. to us. Yeah, um, as, I, 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 as I told you, I, I would come the week after. <laughs> yeah, great. Welcome. Um, we usually get started about five after. That's cool. Uh, there's a link to the meeting notes. Um, folks can add your names and um, any topic you'd like to chat about. Right. Um, we might be a minute early, but I think it's uh, worth getting moving. So um, welcome everybody to the regular CNF working group meeting. Um, and uh, I'm out of touch because again, I've been away on holiday for a couple of weeks. So uh, I haven't been, in, been to the last couple of meetings, but uh, I'm just catching up with what we have in the agenda. Um, I see we have a long list of events um, of which the first is actually starting tomorrow. Um, just in case anyone's going, well, firstly, is anyone going? And secondly, has anyone got any specific session recommendations if uh, that it would be worth attending? Well, stunned silence. Have we got I, any attendees at all? I did participate in a panel. Um, that's that first one there. 
um, the Etsy NFA panel discussion. Okay. Um, and there are some folks from service providers and uh, vendors and stuff on the panel kind of looking forward in the future kind of questions as well as talking about working with um, various standards and how to do integrations and stuff. Yeah. There's some, I guess, related talks about all the different topics, so. Around it. Okay. All right, um, beyond that, um, we have, <coughs> yeah, so um, that's the, yeah, the Chinese KubeCon effectively. Um, I don't think we've got very many people from the Asian side of the world with us this morning. We're not exactly set up very well for uh, timing on that anyway, but um, uh, again, any recommendations? I see we've got uh, one mentioned in there, which is um, an edge computing discussion, which should actually proved quite interesting, I would think. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, Mobile World Congress, obviously um, about the biggest event of the year. Um, I don't know what papers anyone might have filed or, or you know, uh, requested there, but um, obviously that can be, quite difficult to get anything um, with anything accepted simply because it is such a large event. Um, uh, I see we have a European uh, um, Open Networking Edge Summit, which will be nice, although God knows whether and <laughs> how, how actual physical attendance will work out for that, you never know. Um, and then we're off into the distance, um, although that KubeCon deadline I recognise is, what, four weeks out, I guess, at this point. So if we want to actually get any, anything into KubeCon EU, then now would be a good moment to um, get it sorted. Um, I'll mention the uh, ORAN community is talking about a face-to-face -face meeting. I mm -hmm. think probably in coordination with uh, Mobile Congress, I'm not sure. Mm, okay. That's, that's got good and bad things with it, trying to find anywhere within 50 miles of Barcelona to stay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's also a long time to be traveling if you want to do both. Both, um, oh yeah, the MWC and, yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, so you've got your ear to the ground on that side of thing. You can keep us up to date then. Uh, yes, I will do that. Sounds good. Okay, reviewing the open pull requests is going to be really, really easy because we don't have any open pull requests. Um, so um, I, I think we're doing very well at the moment. I don't quite understand how we've got that clear, got the backlog cleared, but um, uh, very promising. Uh, which Taylor leaves you to uh, your best practice category updates. All right. All right, uh, folks in my screen. Yeah, yeah, we see. All right, so this is what um, we have now. Um, the one category that's, I guess, not showing on the working group, it is in the test suite, and it's something we've talked about for a while. I think there's an issue, um, is the resilience. We just haven't ever done a pull request to add it. Um, after getting feedback for a while <clears throat> on the different categories and <clears throat> where best practices could go, uh, testing the different concerns and um, I guess focus on areas uh, that would be um, relevant to what we're focused on right now. We've looked at making some updates and um, possible, the idea was to shrink it down a little bit um, with some of the overlap, but not the ones that were still talked about a lot. So here is, uh, if I can move forward, 
And let's see. This is where we're looking to go right now. So from this 10 down to seven. Um, the configuration life cycle would be one where it's somewhat split up and merging um, with others. It's such a large area that you could put a whole lot of things under it. So the configuration is now, which may get a new name. The idea is to focus on the declarative configuration aspects for best practices, <clears throat> whether that's APIs or um, the deployment configuration or tying in with whatever else there. And um, some of the parts of life cycle where you look at best practices or tests that already exist, um, there's already, I don't, I don't know what the total number is. I think it's over 30 something tests that are live in the test suite. Uh, would get merged over into different places like this compatibility and solubility and upgradability, which used to be insulation upgrade. So there's some things that were around configuration that have gone into here. Um, the scaling category uh, goes into resilience, uh, reliability, resilience, and availability. Although I think there may be some that are tied over here, potentially, but it's shrinking it down into a, a little bit smaller. So you can see these res resilience, compatibility got merged. There was a hardware support that is tying into wherever it makes sense over here. So maybe under compatibility or maybe configuration. We think these <laughs> this list is gonna be easier to talk about from a best practice standpoint. Um, we did keep security separate because it seems even though it could go into every part of the um, process from initial design all the way through the production operation management, <clears throat> right now it's such a big focus that we've kept it separate. Um, we can always change these again in the future if it makes sense, but this is the, the direction we're headed right now. I'll stop there and I guess get any feedback. I know that some of the names and words could change a little bit. But... So this is mainly from the uh, testing that you're recategorizing. Is that what you're saying? That that's what made you has made you rethink the categories, right? Yes. So the the test suite it has, I guess it still has because it hasn't changed it. Ten categories. The CNF working group categories has nine. It doesn't have the resilience yet. Um. So the test suite is looking at merging and making it a little bit easier to see where the different tests are. There's a lot of information that would be related, I guess, documentation related to each test about why is this tested? That's why is it important? Oh, it's related to a best practice. What is it doing? And that sort of thing. But tying those all together into a set of categories where people can look and find them and understand what they're about is as important, I think, as uh, the best practice categories. Um, and I think it was, might have been Robbie who did this originally, like a this was kind of an initial structure mm -hmm. for the best practice. We haven't put anything in here yet, but I guess we could update it to have the um, the non-root that'd be under the security. We don't have that listed here, but yeah. But that would be related to um, how it relates here. So the test categories and try to have them in sync with the, the best practice categories.
Okay, well, um, I think the easiest way to do that would be for you to try and pro, pro, um, propose a pull request for the document that you just had on screen, if, since that's the major place where the categories are used, and we can see if we like the result of it. Sounds good. And I'm presuming that this is still open for debate on both sides, that, that if we had some suggestions on how those categories could be done slightly differently, we could go back to um, the um, testing group and uh, talk with them about uh, alternatives as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what makes sense um, to for different folks. So from a service provider perspective, consuming CNS, integrating between multiple parties in the platform and everything else. Um, what are the concerns and what type of attributes or behavior at the highest level, like reliability, resilience, availability, right? Or state, this is about handle, handle state in a flood end way. But what are the things that speak to a service provider and do these do we need to adjust maybe just descriptions and then from the creator side um, what things are relevant right now that are when adopting cloud native practices what's um, something that's relevant to keep in mind mm. and if there's feedback on that whether it's Let's make sure and describe it. Um, you know, Robbie put in some stuff here that I get these started. That's fine. Or if there's like different names or wordings, like configuration, I was mentioning maybe that may need to say declarative configuration or you know some other thing. We've adjusted state I think three times or four times trying to get it what's okay there. But yeah, love to hear any feedback that folks have including now if anyone has anything. Yeah, uh, hi, this is Ronnie. I think it's a good uh, list. Uh, the only thing I'm kind of uh, concerned about is how it will be used by, let's say I'm a, a CNF developer. So does that mean I need to read the set of uh, best practices cover to cover before I even attempt to design my CNF or or can we come up with some kind of a flow chart or cookbook or like a step-by-step -step saying, okay, start here, look at those best practices first, then as you start implementing, look at those. I mean, I'm not sure it can be done. Uh, I'm saying it would be nice if we can do something like that. Um, I might give it some more thought and come up with some initial proposal for it, but I don't know what other folks think if something like that would be necessary or is it possible to create something like that in addition to this uh, set of categories? Um, I, I, I guess it's my personal view on it. I would hesitate to say someone needs to start in one specific place um, to, before they get going. If there's a lot of it's gonna be based on how you, became a, I guess, developer creator, you know, your background on that. So your approach can be very different and you may have, you know, different things within a, an organization where they say, we do this first. Um, and I, I'd say probably the first thing, I, the only thing I'd say is it's good if you try to figure out who your end users are and then work backwards from their needs to, how you're going to do it as far as the best practices goes um, when we're saying like cloud native best practices for networking applications which is what we're talking about proposing i would say you look for those whenever you're building out your your application that would be my approach someone else may say i'm going to go learn the best practices and know them before i start but again i think that part's personal preference but if, if you do, if you have like some type of um, in other documentation 
or workflow or anything that you think with tips and stuff, I think I think that would be welcome to anybody um, for getting started. Yeah, use I, cases, I, user stories, any documentation that helps people build um, applications is going to be a good thing. Yeah, I, I see your point, and I'm still a little bit concerned about how do we help people not to miss any of the best practices or overlook things and discover them too late in the game. Um, I, as I said, I'm not sure I have uh, a very good solution for that. I, I, I had this kind of uh, walkthrough flowchart, whatever, checklist. I don't know. I'll give it some more thought. And if I can come up with a good idea, I'll, I'll share it with the group. I imagine if it's, um, for me, it, it would be easier to start with a specific problem and work backwards. So if I'm trying to create an application that needs to handle state, like a, some type of, uh, I'll just say database, for um, not having a better word. And my there's a core part of the application that needs to store data and I need to keep track of it. And I need that to be you know resilient, redundant and everything else. Well, then I could start looking at what are practices for running um, something that's storing data on a Kubernetes platform, if that's your target. And what are the best practices on that? And then I'd work my way backwards from there. Um, so identifying the problem and then starting to look. And if you have like an area that you're passionate about, then I think you're going to have a better time than if we say, so here is the practices to look at for some, some area that I never touch. But happy to see whatever you're thinking. I'd like to see it flowchart. Yeah. So as I said, I'll, I'll give it some more thought and try to All come right. up with something. Um, I guess outside of like anything with regard to best practices, we do need them published, I think, for people to be able to find them. So that would be one thing. So if anybody wants to help on publishing best practices based on your experience, then please um, just jump right in or reach out to, you know, one of us, um, Ian or myself or anyone else that's actively working on these and we can try to start drafting and get some out. So we'll have to have that. Other than, other than the work here, like as far as a tool, if you're building, if you're creating applications and you're wanting to try to follow best practices, the CNF test suite is specifically designed to help with that. Like it's, we're trying to create it as a tool to help a developer to catch things. So there's a lot of stuff that, so, um, Ben, um, who's on the call, is part of a Cubescape project, and that's a, a security-focused um, tool. And there's direct integration into the test suite that uses Cubescape, and it can do scanning for various um, vulnerabilities or essentially best practices. Some are around the NSA Kubernetes hardening guide. Um, we have stuff from Litmus Chaos, uh, for doing resilience type testing um, and a bunch of others, configuration and other things. So some of these are more on the implementation side um, versus the documentation um, that the working group does, documenting a lot of content to have a deeper understanding. But if, if, you're, if you've had any experience with test-driven development, then the test suite can be a, a, good, um, a good tool in your toolbox for helping to check things as you're moving along. Um, Ian, I think you might have been uh, speaking. And if Ben, if you wanted to respond, then go ahead. Um, no, I haven't been speaking. Um, I was listening along with that. I think it would be, I mean, this is personal. This is not meeting issue, but I, I think I, 
have kind of lost touch how to apply the the test kit that we you you've got um and and exactly how it would help um so i suspect i've got some personal research to do on that side of things um other than that um I believe this was the last topic on the uh, on the list, and unless anyone's been doing updates, which I'll just check for, um, then we're basically we have nothing else to talk about at this point. So, anyone else got anything else they'd like to raise today? Okay. Well, in that case, um, you get half an hour back. Um, thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, have a think about what you'd like to talk about next week, what wants to go on the agenda, and uh, I'll see you again in a week's time. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, thanks.